Welcome to another episode of LibDX Craft Devlog. In this episode, I'll show you how to easily add parallax and fog effects to the background of your 2D scene. We start where we left off last time, which is we have this sprite shaders animated and tiled, and they're also now available from the template menu in the new shader pattern. So, but to add a new background drawing, I'll add a new shader with a tag background and it will have a texture parameter, texture property of the texture, which I will just sample at the, at the sprite UV. And connect the color and alpha of it. Okay, now let's take a look how it looks in the application. As you can see, I've added a couple of sprites to the background here. They are looking very, first of all, very blocky because they are made much, much larger. And also they are blending in with our actual foreground, which is not a very good idea for a game. So let's try to fix this. First of all, I will create a parallax effect, which means that when I... So these things will start looking like they are actually in the background. They will move much slower than the foreground. So to start it off, I have to get a position of the camera. And I need, I'm need only interested in the X and Y values, so I'll separate them from it using the split. And I'll merge them into the vector 2. X and Y only. Okay, and that will give me, let's group it, camera, x, y. Okay, now that we have camera x, y, we have to figure out how big of a parallax effect we have to apply for each sprite. And the way I want to do it is I will be using the sprite layer. These sprites were set up in a way that they are further away from camera because they're drawn find everything else. So the layer is obviously higher than everything else. So when I use the sprite layer, I can, for example, multiply it by, depending how you set it up, set your sprites yourself. In my case, the sprites are set up to be layer 83, 90, 65, and 40. So they give me distance from them, from the camera. And in here, I'll because I want to bring this, this value into the range of 0 to 1, I'll multiply it by a constant of 0 0.1. That way I'll have value from 0 to 1, where 1 is if it's at the very, very far end. So because as I, as, I sh as I have shown you, the largest value of layer was 90, I'll have a value of 0 0.9. Okay, so this is, let's group it as a parallax factor. And to move the objects, I have to modify the position here. And the way I modi modify it, I multiply the vector two of the camera, so the XY camera by this value. And I'll add it to the sprite position. That way, Whenever camera moves, let's say one, no, let's say 100 pixels, the furthest, the sprite furthest away will move by 90 pixels in the same direction. That way it will, from the perspective of the camera, it will move only 10 pixels, if not the camera moves 100 pixels. That's how we'll achieve the parallax effect. So let's connect it up and take a look at the result of the change. Okay, so now you can see the, the furthest away the right is moving much slower than anything else in the foreground and the character, and it's already looking like it's actually in the background. The problem is now that it still blends in with the foreground. You could fix it by modifying the texture that you're using here for the rights, but there is much better way, which is a something that is called fog effect which basically means that you, the further something is away, 
the more you blend it in with the background. So let's move this here a little bit. And uh, so, as I said, we're going we're gonna to blend the color of it with the color of the background. So let's first of all create a constant color. And the color of the background was Eight nine nine FF. That's the color I've used, and we're gonna blend it in using the mix or LERP node. So we start off with the color of actual color of the sprite, the color of the background. We blend it in, and for, as for the factor, we will just use parallax factor. So the further away something is, that this value is bigger. From zero to one, therefore, the further something is going to be away, the more of the background color it will have. I just for reason disconnected this connection here. So let's reload. Okay, so we have parallax effect, so where the background moves much slower than the foreground, and also we have blending in into the background um, with the background color. The thing is that you were still seeing this jaggedness on the edges of the sprites, and that's because, once again, they are enlarged. And what we can do here is basically apply a blur on the background. To do this, I actually will move the background sprite shader into a separate box. The way I'll do it is I'll just export it and then import it in the other place. And once it's exported, I can import it here from file. After importing, I remove it from the previous place and reconnect everything. And since I want to apply the blur to the background, I'll just, after drawing the background, I'll just add a post-processing blur node here. And I'll set the value to radius to 10. Oh, I forgot to connect the camera. And we have a parallax with fog and the background is blurred. So it doesn't, doesn't really, so you can easily see the foreground without focusing on your site much. Okay, I hope you find it useful. Please consider subscribing and liking the video. Thanks for watching, bye.